Hi everyone and welcome to this week's World's End History Story. This week's video is a little different as I am covering some what are hopefully interesting old articles from the newspapers of the past. If the video turns out to be popular and people enjoy it, then I will most definitely do some more as the papers are full to the brim with little snippets of life in World's End in the past. The stories will all be from different years, but not in any particular order. The first story dates back to December of 1891, when two horses and a wagonette, which might have looked similar to the one on screen at the moment, only with two horses and not just one, were seen dashing along Walls End High Street without a driver. The people of the town were quite shocked to see it and PC Dodds began to chase it either on foot or possibly on a bicycle as fast as he possibly could. Obviously he was no match for the horses and by the time he finally reached the bottom of Church Bank he found the wagonette upside down and smashed to bits and the horses nowhere to be seen. The horses were later caught in Willington Quay luckily unharmed. It seems the horses and the cart belonged to a beer company from Newcastle and they had taken fright and bolted tipping out their driver near the railway bridge at Walker. Luckily the driver, a little bit shaken, was also unhurt. This was not the only case of a runaway horse that had happened in Wall's End as in 1886 a horse being ridden by Dr Mears from Gateshead bolted through Wall's End along the high street with the poor doctor crying out for help as he was unable to get control of the horse. Sadly, this did not have such a happy ending as the horse ran into a pillar of a large lamp that stood near Wall's End Cafe and was killed. Luckily, however, the doctor had managed to fall away from the horse and was not seriously hurt. His brother, who was also a doctor from North Shields, was sent to and he was checked over and later carried on with his journey. This again seemed to have been a case of the horse taking fright near Walker Railway Bridge, and it seems that runaway horses were quite common, and most seemed to be spooked by the noise of the trains, or in later years by the new cars on the roads. In 1898, George Blair applied for a license and the right to build a superior, his words, not mine, public house with accommodation and with a large assembly rooms beside it. The location is stated as being on the corner of Henry Street and Renfrew Road. I haven't actually been able to work out where these streets were from any of the old maps, but at the time, Canon Henderson of St Peter's Church opposed the application stating that close by was the coach and horses and the station hotel was also not too far away so there was no need for another public house in this area so this makes me think that those streets had been somewhere in the area between the coach and horses and the station hotel but if anyone knows for certain do please let me know Sir J. B. Hunter had also opposed the application by Mr. Blair, despite the fact that he had had the support, it seemed, of over 190 local residents who thought it was a good idea, but it had still been refused. Sir J. B. Hunter and Canon Henderson were often part of the licensing team, for want of a better way to describe it, so it does make me wonder how any were ever accepted as Sir J.B. Hunter was a teetotaler and not keen on drinking establishments and often talked against them, and Canon Henderson was the rector of St. Peter's and often opposed requests as it seems he was not in favour of drinking either. So this may explain why also in 1898 at the same hearing, Marianne Tyson of Two Hope Villas, North Road, who had applied for an off-beer license for the said address, a house which had previously had a license but which had lapsed, found it being refused when Canon Henderson stated his opposition, again suggesting that there were enough drinking establishments close by so another was not needed. 
In the 1800s, it was quite common for people to run what were called off sales and also some on sales of beer from their homes. There were several applications for this in Wall's End in 1898 and obviously in many other years as well, though not many of them were actually approved. I have to say, I can't imagine people coming to my house to buy beer, especially if I had to wash all the glasses. But there was good money to be made from doing this, so I can see why so many people in Wall's End wanted a licence. And another from 1898 was Francis Murphy, who ran a public house from a building which stood on the corner of Hadrian Road and 7th Street. It had been trading well as only off sales for some time and Francis was now hoping to be granted a full license with plans to demolish the current building and to build something much larger. Wall's End was growing rapidly at the time and in previous in the previous 12 months 250 flats and 22 houses had been built and they were all now occupied with plans in place to build hundreds more houses in the area. So this had led Francis Murphy to believe that his plans were valid ones as there would be a need, in his opinion, for a new public house and lots of new trade in that area. However, it seems that others did not feel the same. And once again, it was Canon Henderson and Sir J.B. Hunter who opposed the plans and the application was refused. Unfortunately, the article didn't state if he was still allowed to sell from the building he already had, but I would assume that he was, as the application was not for that on this occasion. It was said that at the same time, an unnamed man had also opposed the application. This would be somewhat similar to an anonymous vote, stating that had the application been approved, he, as the owner of several houses in the area, had felt he would have to sell them before the value had dropped due to the public house being too close to them. It does seem that people were not always keen on the idea of new public houses being built close to their own houses. A fun little story from 1849 is about Mr James Crozier of War's End, who managed to get himself a little bit of fame for his gardening skills. It was said that he had managed to grow a giant cabbage, which does seem to be quite large as it was weighing in at four stones five pounds. It caused such a stir at the time that it ended up being put on display in a shop window in Newcastle. However, the name of the shop is not mentioned. And sadly, I couldn't find much more about it, so I don't know how long it was on display for, or if it was ever eaten, or just allowed to go mouldy. But hopefully it was eaten, and maybe Wall's End had a cabbage soup night when it was cooked. Another story with more of a fun element, and from a more recent time, was about Jake the Swan, who was apparently well known in Wall's End Park. So I have to add here that sometimes it was said that Jake was just the name that carried on and that it wasn't always the same bird, as on one occasion Jake turned out to actually be a female and laid an egg, though there are no details to say that it ever hatched out. Anyway, one day in 1953, the then Jake decided that it was time to venture out from the park and he went off for a wander down to Willington Quay. He was spotted wandering along in the middle of the road beside Willington Gut. The police were called and tried to move him along, but it seems he was not too impressed by this and was described as getting a bit angry, so no doubt he was having a bit of a hiss and flapping his wings. So with their attempts to catch him failing, the best the police could do was to walk behind him and try to shoo him along towards the burn stream. This was apparently much more successful as on reaching the stream he promptly climbed in and swam off without a care in the world and I have to assume that he did make it back to the park as I did not see any further reports of him wandering down the gut. I have heard rumours that some of the swans, the ones that were known as Jake, were frequently wandering around the streets near to the park but I can't say for sure if this is true as these stories often came from people rather from than from newspaper articles. And I also have to add that I did wonder how they could have been sure that the swan in 1953 
was the famous Jake at Wellington Gut, but perhaps he was the only swan in the area at the time. I'm sure that many of you can remember playing what I called Knocky Door Neighbour when you were younger. I know I certainly played it around Lebenham Avenue and Park Road, but I wasn't very good at remembering to run away. And it was certainly not a new game at the time that I played it, as back in 1903, one unfortunate boy found himself getting a mention in the newspapers for playing the game. He had unluckily knocked on the door of an off-duty policeman in Wall's End and hadn't ran away quick enough. He was caught and cautioned for his trouble. I do have to wonder if it stopped him or if he just learnt to run a lot faster so that he didn't get caught again. Finally, in an article from 1927, it was noted that Miss Nora Hunter was to become the president of the Warzan District Nursing Association. Nora was one of the daughters of Sir J.B. Hunter and his wife Annie, and she was following in the footsteps of her mother, who had given 33 years service to the Warzan Nursing Association. It has to be said that the Hunter family had played a massive part in the early history of Warzan, with connections to the building of churches, the Wall's End Cafe, the Memorial Hall and also, of course, the gift of Wall's End Hall for the use of the people of Wall's End. And many of these things involving George Hunter giving money or land away for the benefit of the people of Wall's End. And a lot of things would probably never have happened had it not been for his generosity. Nora never married and she is buried with her parents in St Andrews in Newcastle as you can see from the photo on screen at the moment. I do hope that you have found some of these little stories interesting or fun to hear about. And as I said at the start, if you do enjoy this video, then do please let me know in the comments below and I will most definitely do some more with a similar theme. But for now, I thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.